Thank you for listening to our midweek service from Christian Ministry Church. We're praying that this message blesses, encourages, and equips you to build the kingdom of God. And now a message from Pastor Tim Brooks. Well, we got a note that came today. I love you guys. I listen to your podcast every day. If there isn't a new one, I go back to previous and find one I haven't listened to. I have an hour commute to work, and not a day goes by that I don't at least listen to at least one podcast. Thank you so much for all you do. Uh, Here's Hank from California. Glad to have you join us. We're sure grateful for all of your support and pray God's blessings on you. And I'm grateful for all of y'all being here in person. I'm glad Hank in California is listening to everything we do, but I'm sure glad y'all here in Arkansas are listening to what we do too. We are in our fifth lesson in a series entitled Wilderness to Blessings. Uh, I'm a little sad. Next week is lesson number six, and that's our last one in this series. I, I just, I, I love this stuff. I just love the Old Testament and seeing how it shows God's plan for us in the New Testament. We're talking about the fact that far, far, far too many saved, delivered, forgiven people live their entire life less, far less, than what God has for them. And that's sad. That's sad that God's got a blessed, happy, abundant life for you, and and you live upset and sad and lonely and miserable, and your feelings are hurt, and you're just crushed. And I mean, it's sad. It's sad. We've been studying the natural life in the Old Testament in these events that happened in people's life because these natural course of events in the Old Testament reveal spiritual truth that we live in in the New Covenant. And what the Israelites did under Joshua and and, and what happened under, under Joshua's leadership as they moved from the wilderness, from the desert to, to the wilderness existence, into a blessed life. I mean, what did they do? What can we learn from them? And that's what this study is all about, as we study these chain of events in these people's lives. Turn to Joshua chapter 6. You ought to just, Bible fall over, open there. That's where we've been, and we just continue to move on to the next event. We talked about in chapter 6. Verse 20, we ended our last lesson with the miraculous fall of the walls of Jericho. Just a miraculous event that took place in chapter 6, verse 20. Wow, God moved. You go right on and you read verse 20 and 21, and, and here's what jumps off of the page. The battle was not over when the miraculous event of the walls falling happened, as a matter of fact, their battle just began. I mean, the battle just, the battle began. And here's the point that I want to start off with. After the miracle, the fight is on. And we don't seem to get that in the Christian life today. God does a miracle in someone's life. The miracle of salvation, the miracle of forgiveness, the the miracle of your debt being paid in full, the the miracle of a brand new start, the, the miracle of old things and all that junk in your life, old things passing away, all things becoming new, miraculous move of God. But here's where we miss it. It is after that, after the miraculous event, that then the battle starts happening. See, to live our life in the blessed land, we receive a miracle. God forgave you. Now you got to drive out your lust. Now you have to drive out your bitterness. Now you've got to drive out your pornographic addiction. See, now you've got to drive out alcohol out of your life. See, now, boy, we had a miracle. I've been saved. I've been forgiven. Okay, now the battle starts. You've got to drive this temper out. And this temper is 
controlling your life, and the walls fell. Woo, everybody was shouting, my goodness. Okay, now you get your sword and the battle's on. That's where we live. If you're going to move your life from the wilderness into the blessings, if you're going to move out of the desert and live in the promised land, you're going to have to grab your sword and start fighting because your laziness is going to have to be defeated or you're not ever going to live blessed. See, that smart mouth of yours will have to be defeated or you're not ever going to live blessed. The sexual sin that you live in, now that's got to, you've been forgiven, you've been set free, you've got a brand new start. But now you've got this sin in your life that you're going to have to whip out. Here we go, moving on, chapter 7. They had just captured Jericho. What a victory, what a victory. Know this, as you're moving from living in the wilderness to living in the blessed land, it's not just one battle. It's not just one victory. You know, I, I get my patience, and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I can just stand there in Walmart, put that smile on. Is this lady fumbling in her purse, looking for her credit card? I feel in my heart, just pay the bill for her and tell her to get the heck out of my way. I, but, I, you know, just doing good. I got my patience under control. And then my anger comes up. See, it's just, it's one battle after the next. You, you think we're just going to whip one enemy, and then we're good, we're in the promised land. No, you got to whip the next enemy. You got to whip the next enemy, so here we go. The walls fell. Man, woohoo! yes, hot dog. Chapter 7, verse 2. Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai. When they returned, okay, everybody here? Verse 3. They told Joshua, ah, no need for all of us to go up there. Won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack the AI. Since there are so few of them, don't make all of our people struggle to go up there. All right, now we've talked about sending in spies is not a demonstration of a lack of faith. That, that doesn't demonstrate your lack of faith. Sending in spies is what we do to get a battle plan for what's got to take place. Now, we got the spies, go survey the situation. Careful in your life who you get advice from. Better be careful who you get your advice from. Your friends. I can tell you what, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put up with that. I'm, okay, all right, the fact that they've been married seven times may not be the one you want to get marriage counseling from. See, but the fact that they've been bankrupt four times, that may not be the one that wants to speak into your life about finances. So you're careful about your advisors. Now, we've already seen this. We had a group of advisors that had the grasshopper mentality. Oh, we can't whip them. Oh, my Oh, no. Oh, see, that grasshopper mentality. Do your advisors, all of your buddies around you have a grasshopper mentality? You can't go to college. You can't pass. You can't do, don't start that business. Don't go in. Sit down. You, you can't hang around and get the advice of a bunch of grasshopper mentality people. Okay? You better be careful that you don't hang about around a bunch of prideful, arrogant, egotistical counselors now here we got no prayer no purifying themselves just a cocky attitude ah no problem well oh wait, wait. Did, did y'all pray about this i don't need to pray about this we don't need to send the whole army nobody needs to go up there and struggle we just gonna go get them okay be careful about your advisors be careful who's speaking into your life be careful who has spied out the land and then coming back and telling you what you should do or what you shouldn't do. Now, write this down. Do not assume God will bless whatever you just dive into. You better consult God. God, is this right for me to do? Is this in your plan for me to do? God, I believe this is your plan, but is this in your timing right now is this how you want me to go about this 
See, assuming that God is just going to bless me as I jump into this new business, assuming that God's just going to bless this marriage as I jump into one, well, I looked around, she didn't work out. She go, here's one that said yes, I'm just going to dive into this. You, but, okay, now hold on. Before you just jump into this marriage, you better ask, God, is my heart right before you? God, am I hearing your voice? Say, I, am I hearing the voice of some arrogant friend right now, or am I hearing your voice? We, there's a lot of lessons that we could learn right here from this battle going into AI. Joshua did not seek the mind of God. He just accepted the advice of the spies. The spies said nothing about God. You know, it's just a lot of places in Deuteronomy, it says, be careful lest you forget. Just be careful lest you forget. There's a place in Deuteronomy that says, be careful lest you say to yourself, by my power, by my might. Don't go there now. Be careful. Well, that's exactly what happened here. That's exactly what what happened? And God already warned about this in Deuteronomy. Always remember Isaiah 55. God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God's ways are not your ways. So before you dive into something, it would behoove you to get his thoughts. See, it would behoove you to figure out his ways on this thing. Always know, Proverbs 16, pride goes before a fall. We had a great victory in Jericho, so now, just here we go to Ai. We don't need to pray about this, not one minute. Verse 3, when they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than just a few of us. See, victory was assumed. Victory was assumed, and you never, ever live life without seeking God first. Yet, God, thank you for blessing me. Thank you for all of my past victories. Now, is this the next step for me? Is this the next thing you want me to do? All right, let's go back to verse 1. I want to see another point here. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things, so the Lord was angry with the Israelites. Why this loss at Ai? I want to learn from other people's mistakes. They went up there, got whooped. All right, now what can we learn from that? God's pe Verse 1, God's people had violated His instructions. You don't violate God's instructions and live blessed. That's the way it is. You're not going to violate God's instructions and live blessed. In your life, as you're moving your life from the wilderness to a blessed life, do what God says to do and don't do what he says not to do. It's just clear. God's kids violated his instructions, and so they got defeated. If you're getting defeated in life, if you've had a series of defeats in your life, you might want to check out your obedience to the Lord. You, you might want to reevaluate, am I out of God's will? Am I being obedient? You can write this down. You can write it down in ink because you won't ever need to erase this. God is not. God never has blessed people who are living in sin. Is there sin in the camp? Sooner or later, this thing's going to crumble in on you. They got defeated. They got defeated at AI. Okay, another lesson. Don't get mad at God. Don't blame God. Let's see where the mess up is. Okay, verse 10. The Lord said to Joshua, get up. What are you lying on your face like this for? You know, since you're crying and being all upset, Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. They've not only stolen them, but they lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. 
That's why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. Now, Israel set itself up, has, it set itself, has been set apart for destruction. I will not remain with you any longer unless, unless you do what I told you to do. Get up, command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. In the morning, you must present yourself by tribes, and the Lord will point out the tribe which the guilty man belongs. Their sin, now let's deal with it. Their sin, let's deal with it. Church, we, we just continue to go over this. God does not okay you living in sin. He does not okay that. God does not, ex well, you know, Achan had some hard times growing up, you know, when he was nine. Well, you know, when Achan was eight. Look, God does not accept sin. God does not tolerate sin. God does not understand sin. Oh, God gets you. God don't get you. He said, don't do that. So you better not do it. Now, as I read this, I don't know what abuse happened in Achan's past. We didn't call in a counselor to find out why Achan did what he did. We didn't label Achan as having a disorder so we can excuse his behavior. And I don't know, nor do I care, what all Aiken's friends are now accepting or okaying on his TikTok or Facebook page. Here's what I'm telling you. Verse 3, you're not going to defeat the enemy in your life until you get sin out. That's what it is. Verse 13, you're not going to defeat sin. Or you're not going to defeat the enemy until you get sin out of your life. All right, chapter 7, verse 20. Aiken replied, it's true. I have sinned. Sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins, a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I just wanted them so much that I took them. You, you need to know that you can't hide sin. You, you can't hide sin. Amos chapter 9, verse 3, God says, I'll find out if you go up on top of a mountain. I'll find out if you go to the bottom of the ocean. Ecclesiastes 12, 14, God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing. Achan had disobeyed God. He'd gone after some silver, some gold, an expensive garment. My question is, was it worth it? What? Yeah, it was beautiful. And you wanted it. Was it worth it? Always count the cost. Always count the cost. Was it worth it? it I'm just asking. I know clearly you get a buzz from pornography. Is it worth it? What it's costing you? Is it really? Yes, I know the adultery. I know the drugs. I know some alcohol. I know... I know it gives you a buzz and a thrill. My question is, Aiken, was it worth it? You know, I, I, man, 200 silver, I don't know what. Was it worth it? Sin will have you missing the blessed life. Sin will have you missing the blessings of God. And you can always know secret sin leads to public failure. It always does. Always does. What you're doing will come out. My advice is get right with God. For you to move your life from living in the wilderness, with, I'm just so lonely, I'm just so miserable, I'm just so unhappy. Is there some sin in your life that you need to get out and do you need to get right with God? Now also in this event, I want you to know, no one person's sin ever just affects only you. Uh, your, your sin hurts your mom. 
Your sin hurts your dad. Your sin affects your friends. Your sin affects the company that you work for. C come on, dads. Don't do this to your kids. I don't care how fun it is. And I don't care whether... Don't, don't do this to your kids. Husbands, don't, don't do this to your wife. Teenagers, young adults, don't, don't put your parents through that. Don't put your women, your mouth, and, and your, your... Come on. You're hurting a lot of people with your mouth. See, your sin hurts, and it costs you but others around you. Let's confess our sin, let's get it right with God, and let's live blessed. I'm not preaching this because it's a condemnation message. I'm not preaching this to whip you about your sin. I'm teaching this so we can move into the blessed life. See, I'm teaching this so you can move out of this funk that you're living in and live in a land flow with milk and honey. I'm a, don't you say, shame on you for doing that. Oh, you're full of sin and you wicked thing. That, that's not the point of this. The point is, come on, there's a great life out here. Walk away from that junk and get in the blessed life. All right. I, and I, I, I read this years ago. Henry Ford defined a mistake as an opportunity to begin again more intelligently. <laughs> How many of you know all about, okay, let me try this again, but this time I'm going to try it a little more intelligently. Don't let your past defeats wreck your life. Let's just do this again a little more intelligently this time. All right, once sin had been dealt with, then God was free to speak. Chapter 8, let's move on, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and attack Ai, for I've given you the king of Ai, his people, his town, and his land. You're going to destroy them as you destroyed Jericho and its king, but this time you may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourself. Set an ambush behind the town. All right, Joshua had just experienced a humiliating defeat. The cause was sin. Now, when you look at this, sin was dealt with. Sin doesn't have to take you out. It doesn't, it's, it's, not the, it's not the end of the game. Let's get forgiven. Let's get it dealt with. And now, here we go. Let's move on. After sin is repented on, repented from, then move forward. Let's move on. God returns. God's speaking to them again. Joshua marches in and is victorious. After a defeat, people get discouraged over their past failures, and they quit. You've blown it. Come on, let's get our sin out, dust ourselves off, and let's go again. They blew it. They got defeated. Now they're right with God. Okay, I love this. Go back to verse 1, chapter 8. Do, okay, remember they blew it. But now they got their sin right. Do not be afraid or discouraged. God wants you to know you messed up, but don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged over what you did a year ago. Don't be discouraged over the way you blew this. Come on, let's go again. Verse 3, here we go, a new strategy. So Joshua and all the fighting men set out to attack Ai. Joshua chose 30,000, not 3,000, as his cocky advisor said. Choose 30,000 of his best warriors, and he sent them out at night with these orders. You hide in an ambush close behind the town. Be ready for attack. When our main army attacks, the men of Ai will come out to fight as they did before, and we will run away from them. We will let them chase us until we've drawn them away from the town. For they will say, the Israelites are running away from us as they did before. Then while we're running from them, you will jump up from your ambush, take possession of the town, for the Lord your God will give it to you. Set the town on fire as the Lord has commanded. You have your orders. 
So they left. They went to the place of ambush between Bethel, the site of Ai. But Joshua remained among the people in the camp that night. Early the next morning, Joshua, roused by his men and started toward Ai, accompanied by the elders of Israel. All the fighting men were with Joshua, marched in front of the town, and camped on the north side of Ai with the valley between them and the town. That night, Joshua sent about 5,000 men to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the town. So they stationed the main army north of the town, the ambush west of the town, and Joshua that night spent the night in the valley. God is a God of new beginnings. God, okay, we messed up. Everybody's asked for forgiveness. We're good to go. Our heart's right. Now, yes, you blew it, but you've got it right. God's now speaking to us, and let's move. Let's move on. you got to get this. I mean, there's so many cool things right here. Verse 5. When the main army attacks, the men of Ai will come out and fight as they did before. We're going to run away. We're going to draw them out. The Israelites are running away from us as they did before. Here's what, I, here's what I want you to see. God organizes victory out of Joshua's past mistakes. Oh, this is real good. For those who are not on their phone and texting their buddy right now, let me just tell you something. You blew it. You big time blew it. But now God is going to use your mess up now in a way to defeat your enemy. Is that not the coolest thing you ever... God takes your previous loss and uses it for your next victory. Okay, you run away. They're going to chase you like last time. I love this. Only now. So I love that part. Only now. Okay, verse 6. We will let them chase us. Don't judge the battle by how it's going right now. you got to see how this is going to end. Oh, they're chasing us, they're chasing us, they're chasing us. Don't judge the battle about what's happening. Right now, they're chasing you and you're running for your life. Don't judge the battle by how it's going right now. You look at how this thing is going to end. You look at what God's plan is down the road. Oh, this, this stuff is just, I love this. Verse 2. You'll destroy them as you destroyed Jericho and its king. But this time you may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourselves. Verse 27. Only the livestock and the treasure of the town were not destroyed. For the Israelites kept these as plunder for themselves as the Lord had commanded. If Achan could have just waited. If Achan could have just waited and followed God, been obedient to God, he would have had more than the silver, more than the gold, and a bunch of expensive garments. If he would have just waited and operated on God's timing. But no, he's got to jump ahead. I saw this and I saw that and I wanted to keep some of these spoils for myself. If only Achan would have just waited, he could have had all he wanted and more. It's just amazing how we won't pay attention and follow God and follow his timing in our life. He wanted that silver. He wanted that garment. And I get it. I get it. God wanted him to have it, just not right now. Just live your life in obedience to the Lord. And all the desires of your heart, all that you want in life, God's going to see that that's taken care of for you. You can't run ahead of God. You can't get ahead of God. And you can't start doing things on your own strength. God, I want to follow your will. I want to follow your plan. And in your timing, God, in your timing, then all of the silver, all of the gold, and all of the spoils. Wow. Verse 30. 
I I hope y'all like this even close as much as I do. Verse 30. Then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal. He followed the commands that Moses, the Lord's servant, had written in the book of the instruction. Make me an altar from the stones that are uncut and have not been shaped with iron tools. Then on the altar they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. And as the Israelites watched, Joshua copied to the stones of the altar the instructions Moses had given. Then all the Israelites, foreigners, native-born alike, along with the elders, officers, judges, were divided into two groups. One group stood in front of Mount Gerizim, the other in front of Mount Ebal. Each group faced the other, and between them stood the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. This was all done according to the commands that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had previously given for the blessing the people of Israel. Joshua then read to them all the blessings and curses Moses had written in the book of instruction. Every word of every command that Moses had ever given was read to the entire assembly of Israel, including the women and the children and the foreigners who lived among them. I'm not going to go all back into it because we talked extensively about this a couple of lessons ago. We've talked about the importance of building altars. That is taking the hard things in life and putting them in a place that will remind you of what God did right here for you. you got to remember what God did for you. Oh, what's going to happen to me? I don't know how this is going to work out, but I can take you back and I can show you altars in my life where God got me through this, where God got me through that, where God saw me through this. And because he has always seen me through, he will do it again. We have to have altars that we can go back in our life, that we can go back and show those around us, let me tell you what God has done in my life. We have to have those experiences where we take the hard things in life, stack them up, and we can remember. We can remember all the instructions that God gave. We're going to read them over, and we're going to read them over, and we're going to read them over. Don't ever forget what God has done for you. Y'all stand. Lord, we're so grateful for all of the things that you have done for us. Thank you for all the many things that you have seen us through. Thank you for all of the ways that you have helped us overcome hard things in our life. Tonight, Lord, we give you thanks. Now, Lord, we put our hand in your hand. We walk with you. We trust you for the outcomes of our life. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you for listening to this message from Christian Ministries Church. If this message impacted you and you'd like to sow into our ministry, you can give at cmchurch.com. If you'd like to listen to more of our messages, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Christian Ministries. God bless.